Salut! Welcome to this episode of the Wireless Weekly, part of the LTG Network, episode 54, recorded on May 21st, 2013. This episode is brought to you by Audible.com. Get your free audiobook trial at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. This is the show where we talk about mobile tech news, updates, and innovations. I'm your host, Tony Hannity's, and I have here with me this evening uh, two very distinguished guests of the LTG crew, Mr. Radford Castro. What's going on, man? Hey, and uh, last but not least, Mr. Sean Wilkin. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, for joining me this evening. We have a lot to talk about, uh, but before we go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and let our listeners and viewers know how they can get in contact with us. So if you would like to voice your opinion, complaints, questions, anything, uh, you can email the whole group at comments at lazytechguys.com or call us at 707-722-5299. That call is not a toll-free call, so it will take minutes. But uh, if you prefer just to leave us a little note, you can always follow us and uh, tweet us or whatever at Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter, and uh, we'll be sure to try and respond back to you. So before we jump into the the swing of things, let's let's just go and uh, take a look at the top headlines. Ecore is a company out of Italy, and they've created a brand new tri-boot tablet that will boot in Windows 8, Android, and Linux Ubuntu. Also, Yola, coming off of the heels of Nokia, Nokia has have created a brand new phone called, well, you guessed it, the Yola. Sony has revealed the Xperia UL. These are weird names, but whatever. Verizon selling off your location data. That's kind of scary for me because I'm a location data fiend. And Sprint <laughs> will launch Tri-Band LTE, which might make them on the forefront of, uh, of, of the LTE competition. But before we go ahead and jump into all that, let's go ahead and thank our first sponsor, uh, which is Audible.com. So for you listeners and viewers of the Wireless Weekly, Audible is offering you guys a free 30-day trial to try out their service with a free book in the deal. Now, the books range from nonfiction to fiction. Um, it can be autobiography, you know, science fiction. I guess that's fiction. Um, whatever you like. And sometimes the books themselves are actually ri uh, written and read by the authors. So um, I know Tina Fey, she wrote her own autobiography and she actually read it and it's supposedly very, very funny. I have written, or not written, but I've read a number of um, tech-related books. So uh, you got the Stephen Levy book and the Googleplex. So uh, there's a lot to choose from and Sean's favorite, Vampire Diaries. So <laughs> if you're interested in any of those, I mean, they have over 100,000 books on the service. Uh, if you do, just don't have enough time to sit down and read, this might be a good way for you to um, in a sense, pick up a book and get cultured. So go ahead and head over to audibletrial.com. I'm sure you guys are very cultured, but still. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash lazy and download your free book valued up to 40 bucks. It's actually a really great deal. And then you also get other discounts off, uh, off of other books. And it works on mobile devices like Android, iOS, and Windows Phone. And we thank them for being sponsor of the Wireless Weekly and the LTG Network. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Um, yeah, uh, Ecor, I guess that's how you pronounce it. I don't know how to say it in any more of an Italian way, but yeah, Ecor has created a, a tablet. It's called the Python S3, not to be confused with the Galaxy S3, uh, but this is a tablet. It's actually an 11.6-inch tablet, and um, it boots, like I mentioned earlier, in Android, Android 4.1 or 4.2, uh, Android 4.2, Ubuntu, Linux, and Windows. 8. Now they didn't mention if it was Windows Windows 8 Pro or RT, but um, it'd have to be. Uh, it'd have to be Pro. It'd have to be Pro. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Red. Um, other specs on this device include a um, Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi uh, radio, Ethernet, uh, 3G capable, uh, which would be unlocked GSM, two USB ports, and then under the hood, we're looking at a dual core Intel uh, 847. 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of SSD storage, and then as I, as I mentioned, uh, Android 4.2, Ubuntu, and Windows 8 
Pro. Mm -hmm. um, according to the website, this tablet also has an additional uh, keyboard, and this this makes it look more like an actual laptop because the keyboard has a touchpad, mouse, it has the full QWERTY keyboard. Uh, you got your numbers, um, everything numbers. good. And, er, numbers, yeah, you need numbers. Everything good. Your uh, FN, uh, your function keys, your F ones, F fours, all that kind of stuff. And um, the thing is, the the tablet itself is running seven hundred seventy bucks, and then the keyboard is separate, which is an additional hundred eighty dollars. So, wow, um, it's kind of pricey. Yeah, it's kind of pricey. But the fact is, it, it gives you that option to boot in those three, um, those three. Uh, operating systems essentially, and according to Aaron uh, Newcomb, who's, who's the one who brought this to my attention, he said that uh, when you place your order with uh, eCore, uh, not to be confused with Eeyore, um, you have the option to check or uncheck which operating system you want. So, yeah, if you didn't want Windows 8, which <laughs> some of the, some of his followers are like, why would you even want Windows 8? Just Use Ubuntu and Android. Um, he's like, yeah, you don't have to have it if you don't want to. Rad, um, you're you're a, a Windows and and the developer guru guy. I mean, is is this something that you would think that would uh, see a m more than just a niche market, or do you think it's going to be very close niche and small? Um, uh, uh, I think it's accepted. going to be a very accepted market, uh, mostly because uh, Intel is now getting into that whole mobile game. Uh, the Intel Duke Core 847 is actually a Celeron. So it almost makes it sound like that it's a fast processor, but it's probably one of the crappier Intel processors. Yeah, Celeron is terrible. <laughs> it's really horrible. I remember so Celeron. <laughs> it's actually lower than the Atom. So um, mm -hmm. in, 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 terms of, in terms of speed, I would, it would i7, i5, 3, and then you have Atom and then Celeron. That's how slow this thing would be. You know, so I don't know if how Windows 8 would run on Celeron. I have yet to see how it runs on Celeron. My assumption is that this is built more closely towards Ubuntu, even more so than it would be on Android, because Ubuntu is very light. Um, but again, like any open source operating system that you're working with, you're always going to be working against the glass and against people who are, uh, you know, you're at the mercy of those who are going to be updating the operating system so much so for things like drivers. So I don't know what that's going to be like. It might be a completely different experience, you know what I mean, with, with this. And it's such a very, uh, um, this brand is so off the wall, you know so, what I mean? Well, now, you, you mentioned something, I mean, we're talking about a, a slower processor, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but you mentioned that it's Windows, it's possible, probably it's full. Windows 8 Pro. No, it's full. It has oh, to it be. Full? Because, why? Yeah, the reason why RT runs only on ARM. And, oh, um, okay. Yeah, Thank you and, for clearing that up for me. And then Windows 8 can run, but usually runs only on Intel 8, x86 based chips, and that includes okay. Intel and nothing else. Because so, I was just thinking, if it's if it's that slow, wouldn't they want to kind of, I guess, dumb it down and just use Windows R RT? I mean, well, is that a possibility? Well, the problem with RT is that it's a it's a totally different architecture. Okay. Even though outside it looks the same, inside it's very different. That's why there's no native apps for it. So. Um, Intel is trying to be that chip where it's like, you don't have to change anything. We'll just try to do, we'll try to keep things small but still be able to run stuff. So what do, you think, Sean, run. <laughs> what do you think, Sean? Buy, try, or get out of here? <laughs> hey. Hard to say. The star, hey, you know, let someone else give it a shot. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm not putting money up to try that. You know, yeah, well, that's the thing about the next, the next article we have is like a direct example of, you know what, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. yeah. So the Xperia XL. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Oh, no. The next one? No. <laughs> okay, no, no, yeah. not you, right? No, no, right. Oh, okay. So the, the, the next art, So the next one we have on our list here is is about the Yola. Now the Yola team. Now the Yola team is a team that is a team of de of developers, creators. You know the guys who create the phones who spun away from uh, Nokia with the Migo OS. Mm -hmm. So now now they're running their own. Kind of Migo ish featured, but their own new um, um, OS called Sailfish. And they're re introducing a new phone, and this phone is called the, well, well the Yola. Now, the, um, it kind of, if you look at it, it kind of looks Windows 8 ish. That's the first, my it first does, impression, yeah. but it kind of looks like kind of Windows 8 ish as far as the design of the phone. The OS mm -hmm. is, could be just about anything, 
But as far as the specs, this is what they have. 4.5 HD uh, screen, dual core processor, <laughs> not so long, uh, 4 gig, 4G LTE, <laughs> uh, 8 megapixel camera VGA. Now, a couple, it runs Android apps. Big deal there. That's, you know, I'm sure a lot of people here, yeah, it runs Android apps. Now, here's another really cool thing about it. Does One it minute do it well? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, here's the deal. Like, here's it. So, the back of this is called the other half. I mean, this company believes in the sync, believes in marriage, dude. So check this out. This actually, it, this back half makes it compatible with different things like gesture controls and then charging and other unique deals like that. So it actually is a very cool phone and it's a very interesting idea. Now, mm -hmm. If you want to buy one, that is actually kind of where things are a little up in the air. And that's where, in the case for, I guess, Yola, the team needs your help. So apparently they've started something that they're calling the movement, um, not to be refused with the revolution, but, you know. <laughs> so the movement is they're looking to ask people to, to throw some support their way. They're looking to sell this thing for about $400 euro. They're asking for some pre-orders, and they're looking for support. So if you could, like, maybe... Throw support the way. Let them know that you're interested and that you really want to pick up this phone and that this is the device you're interested in. Throw, definitely throw, um, let them know that. And if you think a friend would be, let their friends know. They're trying to spread the word about this and let people know. So Yola is spelled J-O-L-L-A, and you just go ahead and look them up and look for the movement, and you'll go ahead and check them out. So, yeah, and if you check out the, the, um, the article on our website, uh, you'll see a very sleek-looking phone. It looks pretty nice, so. Well, so yeah, there we go. Well, thanks for that, Sean. Now, Rad, as you meant, started to mention about a new <laughs> phone from Sony, why don't you go ahead and talk about that? Cool. So, uh, Sony has unveiled the Xperia UL. It features a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core processor, 5-inch 1080p display, Adreno 320 GPU, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 13 megapixel rear-facing camera, and looks uh, to be slightly thicker version of the Xperia Z. So um, just like the Xperia Z, the, the Xperia UL will be both water and dust resistant, but the device will also offer um, the ability of taking burst photos of up to 5, 15 FPS. So this one's coming with like a dedicated camera button, you know, similar to what they see in WP8, and a wide range of connectivity, such as NFC, DLNA, and IR, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not coming to the US, so that's the bigger deal. Um, the UL, the Xperia UL, has only been announced in Japan at the time, and it will probably be available in, at KDDI on May 25 in pink, white, black, and color variant. So um, hopefully Sony will plan to make it the Xperia UL available to US. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it just seems like quite, it looks like a solid smartphone. I mean, just looking at the trailer and everything, it's, it's a nice-looking design. But you're right. They hardly ever release a lot of their phones in the U.S. So you got yeah, to it's, there, actually. <laughs> it's actually a nicely looking. It's a nice looking phone, and I mean spec wise too. I mean you have you have a. I think the, the this one and the um, Galaxy S4 are the only ones that are pushing this kind of megapixel, you know, uh, numbers on their rear facing cameras. So. Um, no, there's this um, LG there LG Optimus the Optimus uh, Pro Optimus okay. G Pro does as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, but those... this one has a feature that Sean oh so loves so very much. Oh, yeah. It's water resistant. Oh yeah. 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 That's what we're yeah water and dust resistant apparently. Oh, so. even be <laughs> just in case you're in the desert and the rain. I mean, so you're <laughs> at a swimming pool in Nevada. What is this? <laughs> You, you have your foot in, in the. In you have your foot in Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> it's right outside Reno and right inside Vegas somehow. Just. <laughs> I'm curious because it has an IR port, so I'm wondering if it'll turn off Sony TVs off the bat. You know? Well, yeah, I mean that that was one of the the things Maybe that you you'd be able to do with their Bravia TVs. Samsung has that and with their receivers. with their tablets. I mean, yeah, pretty much. You know, like Sony stuff has always been integrated across the board in terms of like they always use the same like IR frequencies when they're uh, well, not really frequencies, but I guess the same patterns when they're controlling all of their IR based um, devices. So, oh, but, yeah, that's right. A B A B. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, no, you're, you're right. Um, I mean, they're they're trying to kind of get away from you having to purchase like a Logitech Harmony remote and say, hey, since you have a Rabia. Just use this, and I have a Bravia, 
and I'm not going to use my phone. That's just me. I'm just, I don't know, you know, I'm so used to picking up a, a remote in one hand and still use my phone for other That's things. Me. The other That's me. That's the old school side of me. I yeah. still like doing that as well, too. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. No judgment. I'm just playing the controller with my mind or my hand. <laughs> Come back well, guess what was announced? No. <laughs> Come back to Lord's Gaming in a few days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Rad. And uh, yeah, like like Rad said, unfortunately, we probably won't see it on U.S. shelves. But if you have a friend in Japan or are in Japan right now, hello, uh, send one our way, <laughs> and Sean will pay you back. Um, now, and going uh, moving on, Verizon, uh, according to Wall Street Journal, Verizon has begun selling something uh, to third-party companies, and it's not cookies. It's your data. It's your location-based information. Now, before you all get your pitchforks and get really scared... Um, hey, I was trying to throw something around here. I was looking for something to throw, and I was like, oh, that's too valuable to me. Yeah, no, well, before you <laughs> throw anything valuable or, ah, yeah, or worthless, um, you, you might be semi-happy to know that the data that they're selling is anonymous. So if they don't know you you from Sean to Sean who spelled incorrectly from Tony to Tony to Tony and Rad to Radford. So they, they don't know who any and Vicks are. They don't know that. They just know that this person is using the phone in this mm-hmm. and they're using this amount of data. Um, the data is being compiled by a company called Precision Media Insight and mm-hmm. is sold to organizations like the government and also even billboard owners, stadiums, and essentially, so they they you know quote unquote this is the this, this is the PR speak, um, so they can get a better understanding about what people uh, the people who frequent their businesses and what they're doing you know what what they're doing on their phones when they come to AT and T Park are they watching the game or analytics they, is everything man it really is yeah and yeah. The, the fact of the matter is um, the the education of of people when they buy buy into cell phones and they decide I'm going with Verizon or Sprint or whoever. Um, they signed the dotted line. They realize, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting a contract, um, but they don't really know what is behind that. And sometimes it's just, you know, you're paying off the longevity of the phone. Fine, that's a two-year contract. But then you're also kind of telling Verizon or whoever, man, you can sell my information. Uh, it's anonymous, but you can sell some of my information. And I know a lot of people are going to be kind of upset about this. Yeah, now, but 18- it won't be a thing. It's just like what you and I talked about. How we were saying, you know, it's one of those things that'll just end up becoming transparent over time. Yeah, we just get used to it. It's it's so. I think some people are already kind of just accepting it, and it's mm-hmm. it's not right that we should accept it, but yeah, we are. yeah, you but, know, it, yeah. we are. We live in that day and age. We, we we said we want this type of technology, and people said, okay, then we want to kind of make money off of that, and that's capitalism, and that's how we're gonna do when we live in a. In a society that we allow it to happen, and um, it is what it is. Now, AT and T is looking to do something similar to that, so don't think you're out of the loop, uh, Sean. <laughs> this is put insane. A, put your foil hat on. Have you actually, oh, Tony? Have you actually on. seen their measurement solutions? Like, looked up uh, their uh, the Precision Market Insights, like what they're doing for the sponsors and retailers and advertisers. It's insane. Like, uh, they're basically their research covers about 230 million people, 86 million retail customers, 70 billion invested on, you know, all the stuff with, you know, using 4G LTE. Mm-hmm. And then they have, they're using this thing called the 360 view, 360 degree view that allows you to look at everything like strategy, you know, market ROI and all this other extra crap that's going to be able to tell you like, oh, this person was facing in this direction when he looked at that. I'm like, wow, this is nuts. It could be pretty. It's scary, but at the same time, it's the reality of it all. Like, there's really no, you know. But th- th- that's also the funny thing is that it's scary. And then when something beneficial comes out of it, it's like, oh, I'm glad that was there. Like, well, it mm-hmm. was there because because this bigger company kind of sold your information, and that 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 what that is what made whatever that is, and that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Well. There you go. No, that's so yes and that's, that's what it's Yeah, it's like on the one side you're you feel kind of uh violated uh, violated because of mm-hmm. your, you know, certain privacy, like you don't want to be uh found that you are you you are in certain places that you should not be, you know what I mean? But at the same time, when you're collecting when you're grabbing data collectively, it's different versus collecting data over one person. Over one right? person, yeah. Yeah. So that kind of thing is different. 
Um, like you just have when you put things in context, it makes it a little bit more. I mean, I don't say it makes it less uneasy, but I'm just saying that it's probably. I mean, to an advertiser, like I'm just reading all of the stuff that this. It's thing easier can do. to swallow when you put yeah. it into context. If yeah. you just say we're selling your data, it's like, whoa, hold on. Yeah. If you kind of break it down, say, and say, what we're doing, it's also you. being tracked. Yeah. Yeah. It's you and 84.999 other people. <laughs> so. But I mean, can you imagine if you're, let's say, you're 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 a Verizon customer? They know what apps you're running. Your the Super Bowl is happening, and they, know uh, they do some. Let's say they do. Some, you know how a lot of advertisers they they do a lot of um, they do a lot of uh, hashtag advertising, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. So when that happens, right now it's it's hard for Twitter to track that because they can't get everything. But from a carrier standpoint, they could get. Everything, everything, every yeah. single thing. Like it's so real time. In real time, oh, yeah. it's even faster because Twitter can only get it from an app level, and then mm -hmm. Carrier can get it all the way down to a phone level, even the orientation of the phone, right? So, the, I mean, the thing that makes this really crazy and scary at the same time, though, is that at any given moment, someone could be tweeting something about what happened in the Super Bowl, and an advertiser can look at, okay, you know what? It was effective in these geolocations. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. and you know when we advertise about that product, these are how many people bought it at that moment in time, and these are the people that are in stores at Best Buy the moment they pushed out that Best Buy ad. I mean, that's super effective. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're right. But at the same time, like you said, sort of violating at the same time. But. Yeah. So, um, Rad, you and I kind of touched on this a little bit. If you've got an Android phone, go ahead and check this app out. It's really quick, kind of plug on here. It's called Clueful. It's by Bitdefender. They they have kind of anti-privacy, or privacy and anti-virus stuff. Uh, but it's called Clueful. Clue F L U, and it allows you to know which apps you've downloaded on your phone um, are leaking, quote unquote. Uh, or potentially leaking your information uh, just kind of freely over the over the web. Um, I download it on my phone, and I have 48 out of 100 um, of me being uh, my my clueful rating, and I have I think I have like 38 minor apps that are leaking a l little bit of information, but nothing too scary. So. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of a it's a it's a free app. Check, check it out. Go download it. See see uh, see what kind of stuff could be leaking out there. But yeah, uh, Verizon they're gonna do what they're what they're gonna do. And I'm sure if you decide to jump ship and go to another company, they're gonna do something similar. Mm -hmm. hey, Speaking of about another thing. company, Sean, uh, it looks like Sprint's doing something you know good <laughs> for their well, customers possibly. Well, well, last thing I just want to let set, let you know that everybody, I, I really did have a pitch pitchfork, and I really was gonna be really angry. And I'm more mad now that it made sense and I didn't have any use for the dang pitchfork. So, dang it, Verizon. Anyway, so check this out. Sprint is actually, well, they're doing quite a bit. So, right off the bat, they announced some plans to announce their first tri-band LTE products later this summer. Now, the reason why they're looking to do that is because they're looking, they are currently using, well, there are three bands of LTE that are primarily in theirs. 800 megahertz, 1900 megahertz, and 2.5 gigahertz. Now, they're using 1900 megahertz right now, but they're going to expand out into the other two very soon, and they're going to have the products that are going to use that announced also very, very soon. So if, you're, if you are into LTE, you're a Sprint user, or you know maybe you're thinking about switching to Sprint in the near future, just keep in mind, LTE on Sprint looking like it's going to be a pretty solid product. Of course, we'll see how the rollout really happens because this is all just plans. But um, yeah, it looks like they're definitely doing quite a bit to expand um, LTE and make sure that their devices available are going to well, be compatible with it. So hmm. yeah. higher is better, right? Like higher megahertz. No, no, this is a difference. A megahertz is good. <laughs> um, or is there no difference? No, I'm just comparing um, it based I know. On I know phones. Is that when. The same thing? I know when Verizon got the block of 700 megahertz, it was lower was better. So really, yeah, that's that was my understanding of it. Is it contradicting to say that cordless phones they use certain you know megahertz? So you know they have deck. Like 2.4 is not 2 as good as 5.8. 5.8, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a higher in this case would be better. Yeah. This but in the one, case of that one, this one is almost like really comparing apples to oranges because this one is more. You know, you're talking about mega versus giga on this side, right? I'll have to, I'll have 
to do a little bit more research on that. I'll, I'll get back to you on that, Red. Mm -hmm. But that was my understanding when when um, they got that block, um, and like companies like AT and T said, well, we're just going to reform our existing, um, or even Sprint did, mm -hmm. we're just going to reform our, our existing network. Like we're going to kill IDEN, which is on their 1900, I believe, and we're going to do all this other stuff. Um, Verizon was like, well, fine. It's still not. It's still not as strong as our 4G LTE. Mm -hmm. Like it, it doesn't have the uh, latency that we have. It doesn't have the. It doesn't go through buildings as as good as ours. Again, that that was, that was a, that was a while ago. So, it, it, it might have changed, especially now that 2.5 gigahertz is getting involved um, from the clear wire. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you know about that afterwards. Let's go ahead and move on to rumors and leaks. Now, uh, Rad, uh, this was a phone that I'm kind of hoping is going to come to fruition, but at the same time, it doesn't really make a difference to me because it probably won't work on Verizon. But mm. what's this all about? So last week, uh, when Google announced the, G, uh, the, the S4, it had stock Android, and during that time, the rumors were kind of going around about HTC with stock Android, or the HTC One in this case. So... Basically, it's uh, you're paying the full price of 649, running stock and all that good stuff. Now uh, there were a couple of uh, uh, guys on Twitter that were that were kind of tweeting out that the HTC One without Sense Five. So it's basically like, you know, HTC with stock Android and none of the stuff that you're used to seeing, like the big clock and and the weird Windows Z phone kind of like stuff that's been on it when you you know look it from the get go. So. But um, you know, it's it, it's it, it's a very interesting rumor. This is actually the second time I've heard it today, and it kind of surfaced up during work. And even Leo was kind of like, "Really, is this is there going to be such a thing like a Google edition or whatnot?" Um, so we've been kind of looking into it, but at the same time, it, this is something that that can be definitely. I mean, this is something that is. In high possibility that it could definitely happen. Now the only thing now is where does HTC stand with this whole thing? Because you know the the whole rooting thing is something that both Android and handset developers have been trying to get away from. Um, but uh, it is not still HTC. They have a huge, not a huge, but they have the, the, their developer presence is pretty big. Yeah, they, they have, have a whole a big... HTC developer community. Yeah, those guys are mostly hacks, though. They're not like working for Android or HTC in particular, because there's two they're kind not of hacks. Crap. Like they're nothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not. Yeah, hacks. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> clarify that real quick. <laughs> um, well, no, I mean it's it's an official HTC dev, dev like developer center and resources directly from HTC. It's not mm -hmm. like they're CyanogenMod mod and. They're creating their own stuff, like HTC oh, yeah, is yeah. working. That's why I was trying to actually make that differentiation uh, okay. between those groups, because there are like uh, that does get confused, at least from the you know the the people I talk to. Um, but I mean, for the most part, this is something. It's still like like uh, the article says, massive speculation. And um, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I think uh, when something comes out from the social networks, it's kind of easy to go out, especially Especially when uh, there hasn't been any like confirmed, uh, mm -hmm. you know, screens about on with this phone running it, you know, what I mean, or at least some sort of Photoshop doing it. It's just been now, kind what of you, circulated. What do you think this uh, says to the OEMs that create their own uh, overlays, like HTC Sense Five and 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 uh, the uh, TouchWiz, when people say, "Oh, there, there's this rumored device that's going to have stock Android." And everyone goes nuts about it. It's like, oh my god, that's what I want. Like, do mm -hmm. you think that they're the um, those people are like, well, maybe we shouldn't even build our own thing because they don't even want this, uh, want our, our crap. That's a good question. Or do you but, think? But I think it's more a political again. Like, it's really a partnership mm -hmm. thing. Like, for instance, like you, I'm pretty sure you. I mean, it's obvious to you already that you know a lot of the reason one one of the main reasons like these. Uh, these manufacturers write the stuff they do is because they're trying to cater to the carriers. You know, they wanna they wanna be able to do these overlays and say, look, here's Verizon's thing on it. 
here's Springsting on it, here's T-Mobile's little, you know, account management system on it. And they're all top and center, you know, on every single thing that they put on top of their bloatware. But at the same time, it's like, it's it's one of those things that HTC does to really like stick out. I mean, the moment that they start, someone signs the paper and says, okay, this is going to be our marketing plan, this is, we're going to have something that kind of looks Windows phony-like. Uh, it's going to have all this extra stuff on here. It's going to be this thin and have this kind of profile, which is still, it's a very, very good looking phone. But again, I, th I sometimes think because someone will tweet out stuff and RT and I really don't know what what it really means. I don't know how to quantify it into, you know, um, hey, you know, this is, hey, we're sending out a, a signal to you manufacturers out there. Stop putting crap on it. Just give us the pure Android phone. Just concentrate on hardware. I don't know if that's the case with the manufacturers. I think they're still going to do exactly the same thing, what they're going to be doing since the last number of years. Sean, do you want to uh, re 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 uh, any anything on this? No, it's just what it is. It is what it is? Yeah, I don't know. It, I, it, I, it's a, another addition. I, I don't really have an opinion on how this is going to change the landscape, and uh, I, I'm... All right. I'm, I, I will just sit back and watch that one happen from a distance. <laughs> All right. Well, um, <laughs> let's... Hey. <laughs> well, now, Rad, you were talking about, you know, speculation, rumors, and all that, all these other things. It's really hard to believe, especially when you don't have any kind of tangible, to, uh, tangible evidence. Um, mm. Well, we've got tangible evidence of a Samsung Galaxy S4 active. Um, <laughs> this actually surfaced from GSM Arena. And they have it on screen on a video, and um, the video is sideways. So when you when you watch, it, you have to kind of tilt your head, and the, uh, but it's only about a, a minute and thirty seconds long. Um, but whoever got this phone for GSM Arena is their inside source, and this is supposed to be a ruggedized Galaxy S4. Um, the uh, the phone sports a five inch 1080p Super AMOLED display with quad core 1.9 gigahertz processor. Um, other specs on this bad boy um, include a um, a 320 Adreno GPU, um, 13 megapixel rear shooter, uh, or actually, sorry, it's a, it's a, it's actually only an 8 megapixel rear shooter as opposed to the 13 megapixel that's on the standard S4, and um, yeah, and it has physical three buttons, whereas the S4 is all kind of has that hard middle button and then the the touchpad buttons on the side, but yeah, uh, this hasn't been officialized at all. Um, this is still, still, this might be like a like a, a test product, but it, it looks like it, it possibly is coming, and maybe it's maybe it's even water resistant, Sean. Hey, Rad, we can hear that again. Oops, sorry about that. Dang, Rad. I I don't know how that turned on. I didn't press any buttons. It's just on. Xbox Live. On it's Mars like Microsoft is beaming it to your computer. Directly. Yeah. They want you we to rewatch the event. Exactly. We like, want to drill am... home TV. Uh, TV. I might exactly. slam I'm back at them. Gonna swipe our hand and go full screen. <laughs> full screen. No full screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Our next rumor comes to us from uh, the good old places of Google. So check this out. Remember the Nexus Q, that little bowling ball of a set-top box thing Yay. that they announced oh, a couple years ago yeah. that was about to come out, and they talked about it, and guess what never happened? What? It no, released. it came out. Oh, well, yeah, well, it, what is it? It didn't really... No, it came, came, out, it it came out, it was released, and then it was pulled, like, oh, almost then, immediately, because no pretty one much cared about it. Come out. That didn't come out. I'm sorry, that never existed. Well, looks like they might be trying again. They haven't given up, guys. So this is what we know about it. A, um, a filing was made, and this is what the information that was filed about it. The brand name, Google Incorporated. The, the, the product name was H840 Device, and they have a model number of H2G2. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, number 42. There you go. Funny. Though, is that, did they have that for the other Nexus one or something? Or? No, it's no. just um, bloggers realized that and said, aha, that person has a good sense of humor. I love that movie. It there was a book. <laughs> Not the movie. The movie was like, yeah, book is awesome. So, anyway, we, um, we don't know what it is. 
is rumor about it. It's just another Google box. As far as I'm concerned, it's just something else that has something to do with hitchhikers. So well, it's it's a DTS. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a digital transmission system. So that could that still can mean a lot. I mean, it, it didn't say it's just music. It it could be uh, Google trying to revamp a Google TV possibly, but. Uh, we don't know what it is. We oh, don't. Yeah, we, we obviously don't know what it is. But well, Rad, can you uh, um, verify this with me? Uh, even with things that don't go to market, if they're still prototype, oh, do they have to be passed um, by the FCC? Or yeah, they, they, they actually? So this could just be a prototype. Be, if they're, yeah, if they're going to be sold, they have to go through FCC period. What, what if they don't even plan on having this version sold? Like this is prototype A. We know we're not going to sell this one, but do, if do they give it away for for free, if it's given away free, yes, but still, they would still have to pass through FCC because of, you know, health issues like frequencies and stuff like that. But it's uh, it's interesting that you brought that up because it just happened to know like last week. But it, it's um, like if you actually look it up on the site and they talk about like, oh, how products go go into production in the marketplace, it's really fascinating. But at the same time, you know, if you're gonna be doing prototyping, it's gonna be along a select group of beta users and things like that. Then yeah. Definitely, you know, it, it abides by that. But if you're going to be selling it, it's going to be a commercial product, and you know, it's considered illegal. You know, there's still a lot of those products, even if you don't have FCC compliance. You know, there's a lot of these products that go out into the market without any FCC compliance, and it's just, and they know it. Like, there's millions of these products that are out there. But then the moment they're like in any like big, huge retail like places like Best Buy, then all of a sudden Best Buy gets in trouble. So mm -hmm. it's that sort of thing. And if your if the Best Buy gets in trouble selling your product, then you know good and bad. Best Buy is never going to sell your product, and they're going to tell everybody else because they're going to hear yeah. about that, and then nobody will. And nobody product. wants to do it. They're so like, I'm not going to get in. Good. Regardless, if, even if they just consider releasing this as a potential product, you might as well just get it done. They have the money for it. Just get it done. Mm -hmm. And if they don't release it, fine, whatever. And if they do release it, well, they got this done. They don't have to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. There you go. All right. Last but not least. At Google I.O. last week, they didn't reveal this on stage, but it was, um, I guess, outside in the sessions. Uh, <laughs> the LG Nexus 4 in white, mm. it's a real thing. <laughs> it's a bit shy. One of the guys who was uh, kind of walking around during the whole Google I.O. presentation unveiled, uh, uh, I guess, didn't really make any hardware announcements, but... The LG Nexus 4 is one of those devices that they kind of left out in Home Mix. So according to Android and me, they talked to the, uh, the boys at, at Google I.O. and they said that the launch date is going to be around June, thir June 10 at the Google Play Store. So the new variant doesn't really have anything new in terms of upgraded hardware, but a lot of the guys that were there did hint that it might come with Android 4.3. Now, um, what's really interesting, though, is that it's, it's nice that if it does have, if it's going to have that new flagship, you know, nice shiny new 4.3 Android 4.3. What's what's going to be the code name? Jelly Bean. Um, It'll still be Jelly Bean. Still Jelly Bean. Yeah. So it's still going to be. It's still somewhat. You know, um, uh, not much information is like out there at the moment. But you know, as far as as far as we're concerned, I mean, like it, it's nothing to the norm of any other like platform out there. I mean, Windows is going through that right now. Even iOS has those upgrades. Um, but it's not like uh, there's going to be one flagship that's going to be going five. You know what I mean? Sort of like mm. what the Zoom did for Honeycomb, right? So it's right, it's right. this is a, it's a it's a minor spec, right? Yeah, we um, probably won't but, see five until next next year. Mm. Um, I'm 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 really hoping that in this upgrade they fix the 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 BLE, which is a Bluetooth Low Energy Certification. Then uh, on Android they don't. That's not a standard, and not not all phones have. That's it. Some of the of newer ones do, and the flagship ones do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's huge because well, it's huge for me because I have a smartwatch that doesn't communicate to my to my Android because my particular Android device doesn't have BLE. <laughs> but if I had an yeah. iPhone, it would. So yeah. that's just me being greedy and wanting. Well, my there's also game controllers, so you got to matter. So yeah. Um. So that's pretty much it in the rumors and leaks. Let's go ahead and move on real quickly over to... Oh, sorry, sorry. I was looking at something else. Uh, I haven't actually used this app yet. This is, a, this is an Android app. Call, um... Guys? Yeah, you're, you're, like, cutting in and out. 
Yeah, so you said uh, you there was this right. app that you had not tried. And, and then you... it stopped, and then you started. Yeah, so what was that? Tony. 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 Tony, Tony you're so going through some crazy from, lag. Yeah, this we... is... Uh... Oh, there? Oh. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Where's Tony? He could be anywhere. <laughs> he could be talking to himself. <laughs> or to someone. Uh, Yep. Else. Weefy. <laughs> Weefy is. <laughs> you gotta love the Weefy, don't you? Yeah, the Weefy, the Fifi. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. So, while we wait for it to. Uh, it's, and then I think we heard noise, and I get nervous because that could be the return of the great. Shall we take movies. over the story? No, nah, oh, yeah, let's take over the story. Screw it. Let's go for it. All right, enough suspense. Let's do it. All right. Um, so, yeah, go for it, Red. Here, go ahead, take it over. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna, starting today, Google is offering free admission to 13 museums around the country with their field trip Android app. No, not 13 of your choice. But if you live in Chicago, New York, Portland, LA, or SF, you might want to save yourself some cash and use this handy and helpful handout from Google. Yeah. It feels only for a limited time, so don't wait too long. No. Plus, admission is good for only one person. And the yes. museums on that list are Conservatory of Flowers, California Academy of Sciences. That's, these are all San Francisco, Walt Disney Family <laughs> Museum. And then you got LA uh, Museum of Contemporary Art, and then three of them from Chicago, which includes Museum of Contemporary Art, Adler Planetarium, and the Field Museum, and then some a couple of museums from New York, from DC, and Portland. And one three of them. So yeah. Children's Museum, Portland, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, more programs are allowed. That's kind of pretty cool to see, you know. Um, so I would assume that this is just going to be an app that's going to continue to grow over time and add to its catalog, which is awesome. So if you're into museums, which I am too, that kind of is interesting. It's been a long time since I've been in a museum. I think it's been I like know, eighth, right? grade, eighth grade for me. Yeah. There's actually a like museum where it's just, you know, something. <laughs> have you seen the computer museum near San Jose? No. It's actually just the com from the very first computer all the way to like now, you know, and including smartphones. Well, they like have that. every single computer. That's a lot of computers. How do they get a building? Well, I don't know if that's possible. That's basically a <laughs> landfill. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you want to see all computers, go to a landfill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or a rat's closet. <laughs> oh, so check this out. If you like typing on your Android phone, I think we. So check this out. This is called Flesky. We talked to Fle Is it Flesky or Flesky? It is Flesky, right? Flesky. Yeah. Now, I'm missing an H after a Y. <laughs> yeah, I was so not going there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we talked about Flesky before. It was this really, really interesting way of typing on your um, keyboard or your phone without actually looking at it. It was really cool. It's like people could just kind of do this, and it would kind of figure out what you were doing. It would learn from your typing, and it really gave you a real intuitive way of type, a uh, new way of typing. Now, the app came out. It was only on iOS, and then what I found out as I'm reading this little article here is that you cannot install a third-party keyboard on an iOS. So they found this weird way of you can type up on it and then you copy and paste into the text you want and you send it out. Well, screw that crap because on the Android platform, it's out there and you can go ahead and check it out. So it's in beta. <laughs> you have to sign up for it though. <laughs> you got to sign up for it and there's no guarantee you're going to get in. So if you're interested in checking out this very interesting and unique way of uh, <laughs> Well, interacting and typing on your um, Android device, then go ahead and well, go to our site first. You'll find the article. The article is called Flesky, F L E S K Y, rat, mine out the gutter. Uh, Bandit <laughs> is for Android is now available. Go ahead and check it out, sign up, and um, well, tell us what you think. The thing will be out of beta hopefully sooner than later, and then we all can have some fun with this. There you go. Awesome. Tony, are you back? Tony? All right. Can you guys hear me? We yep. can. All right, cool. Now, we talked about Google uh, Hangouts yesterday during the LTG show, and we didn't really get too into it, but um, did we? I don't know. No, we didn't. Hmm. 
we we, no. we, got, we we had we talked a lot about the music thing, but um, one question. Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey, don't you love it when um, your part you, you he joins his own video call? Oh, I love it, man. That is awesome. We're just waiting for the echoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Red, tell us about Google Hangouts and what they're getting over there. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I wish I could, cause I just been assigned it just now. But uh, so, uh, Google Hangouts is going to get SMS, and the moment I get this page refresh, I'll be able to tell you all the details about it if you're listening to it. <laughs> um, one of the big I/O announcements was that uh, they're going to be rebranding Google Talk and a bunch of these other messages, particularly Hangout, and it would be. Uh, but they didn't really talk about how it would support SMS like chat heads. Now. According to sources for Fandroid, Hangouts will in fact support SMS and replace the traditional Google Plus Messenger app. But um, there hasn't been any kind of, you know, deadline as opposed to when that's going to happen. But uh, again, we're just all speculating. And again, it would just be nice if this, you know, if stuff like WhatsApp is going to come in, something which I think Google just made an acquisition on, right? So WhatsApp is. Uh, is there like a, an official date over when WhatsApp finally gets fully acquired? Unless what it's already happened already. Wait, they got acquired? WhatsApp. Uh, yeah, WhatsApp. And then they? Huh. WhatsApp no. acquisition. There no. you go. Google rumored to be in talk. With oh, that's in talks, yeah. Ah, yeah. That For was back in $1 April. $1 billion. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they debunked that rumor. I think the following day they debunked it, which, yeah, they did. So. Oh, debunked. Bunked. Nice. All right, but well, last but not least, uh, we do have love for BlackBerry 10. Yes, and, we do. and the Moog, or the Animoog, I guess. So this is really interesting. So as Rad and I argued very, very <laughs> last week about uh, audio and Android phones and things like that, uh -huh. this comes out. Animoog is this awesome synthesizer that's been available for the iOS platform, and they announced it for a new platform, and it is not the Android platform. It is actually the BlackBerry Z10 platform. And they once again skipped Android. <laughs> we were now talking you know, about it. We were now you know why. I, now that. you know the funny, the humor about this entire thing, right, Rad? Right. Oh, absolutely. Anyway, yeah, there's no, we don't have to talk. We don't have to go. Now we were both talk. wrong. So, yeah. Well, this, so here's the deal. Um, this is made by the Mug Music Company. Um, it's available for the BlackBerry Z10. Is that that is out, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is such it's a new. It's really phone. horrible that you don't know. Well, no, no. This is one of the Z. It, there, it is. It, I don't know. It hasn't been pumped up as much as you'd imagine. I don't know. In that, in fact, I can't keep up which Blackberries, which and which device. It's just it's kind of weird. And everything has a freaking tin in it. There's but two anyway, Blackberries so, out. Yeah, yeah. The Q and the Z, Z, right? They have a Q10, a Z10. They got to have an S10, a Y10. They're gonna keep on going with this. Y10. They're gonna Stupid. do it. Why not? <laughs> They're gonna um, have twenty six. They're gonna have twenty six options. Then they're gonna come up with operating system eleven. They're gonna start again with the Z eleven, and start again. So this all the this, letters. These this is not a free uh, app. It's by the way, this is a full featured audio synthesizer. It is not um, free though. It is actually ten dollars for it. Now they had it on sale for one dollar. So if you get this really as you're listening to this before the twenty third or on the twenty third, it's ninety nine cents. After that, it will be ten dollars for it. It's a pretty cool app. There's a video on our site that talks about how awesome it is. And yeah, go ahead and check it out. Animoog for BlackBerry Z10. And one day, maybe in the future, possibly Android. Maybe. Well, Sean, did you happen to check out that session? No, I didn't. I was too busy watching the, um, the Microsoft stuff and playing. Dude, uh, uh, um, Rad, I got hooked on Dust514. I'm sorry. Oh. All my productivity just went down the tube, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, Rhett, uh, Tony, I'll, you know what? I'll try to watch it tonight or tomorrow, and I'll go ahead and check it out, and then we can review this in the future. So he says. I will. <laughs> I'll throw it on while I'm playing Dust 514. <laughs> it's not that big of an issue. <laughs> All right. I am having some technical difficulties, even though I am Ethernet Etherneted in to my router. Um, but so for those of you that are watching and for those of you that are listening, thank you for your patience. Uh, next time we'll just have Sean host and he'll do everything. I think there's something going on with your network, dude, with your side. 
Well, yeah, I don't think it will have anything to do with Sean. Well, let's just go no. ahead and blame Victor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> guys, thank you very much for joining me this evening. I really do appreciate your insight, your input, your opinions, and all your rants and raves. Uh, Sean, if you want to go ahead and let people know how they can get in contact with you, that'd be great. All right, I am quite proud to say that you can find me on the LazyTechGuys.com website, as well as Twitter as, as LTG Sean. You can also find me on SoundCloud under my name, which is Sean Wilburn, and and it's S E A N for anyone who's wondering. And also, <laughs> just so you know, this this very very distinguished gentleman right here that you're looking at or listening to. We'll have some music out there that you can go ahead and check out in the near future. It's going to be pretty hot. So remember that name, Sean Wilburn. Go ahead and look it up. There's some music out there already, some remixes I did for some Jagged Edge stuff. Go to SoundCloud, check it out. It is quite awesome. And um, if you like music, music tutorials, I'll be doing a lot more of those. So keep your eyes open. Awesome. Well, thank you. And Rad? Mine's super easy. Just go to about.me slash radcastro, and everything is there. You can access it from mobile devices and your desktop. So, you mean we can find out. out who you are? We can find out what you like. Do you like ice cream? <laughs> you can check out. <laughs> you could. Do you like email me or? Are you cake or pie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you see like a kid next to it, that's actually not me. That's my kid. <laughs> um, but it's it's yeah. So Twitter, Facebook, everything else, it's on. All right, and um, actually, that's probably best. If you go to about.me slash teenninja3000, you can find me as well um, and all of my connections to all the different social networks that are out there. As for the rest of the group, as I mentioned earlier, you can call us at 707-722-5299 or email us at comments at lazytecheyes.com. Should you want to follow us, we are on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, Instagram, Feed, um, and as for podcasts and netcasts, uh, we're on all the major catalogs and, and um, I guess, uh, databases, including BlackBerry, Blueberry, iTunes, uh, Dogcatcher, Pocket Cast. I mean, pretty much everything. But if you use an app or, um, or a catalog that we're not in and you want us to be in there, let us know at comments at lazytechguys.com. Thank you very much for joining us this evening, and we will be back next week with another fun-filled adventure and my Ethernet jack. So you guys have a great night. We'll talk to you soon, uh, and take care. Bye now.